Cause we're gonna be legends What we're doing here ain't just scary It's about to be legendary Why are you really here? Like what is it that you came for? Why are you here in this room? Shout it out, what do you want? Uh, maybe some of you came for change, but come on. What did you come for? What's the real benefit? What's the real end result that you want? Wait, how's that song go? Confidence. never had. All right. How many of you came because you want to make some more money? By the way, there's nothing wrong with that. But I want to be clear. I want to make sure you're clear. You actually don't want money. You think you want money. You actually want money for what reason? You want to do what? Come on, be honest. Get specific. You want money for what? You want, to t you want to travel and take a vacation? You want money for what else? You want money to help others? What else do you want money for? Live comfortably, a boat, a house, a nice car. But guess what? You don't want any of that either. You actually want those things so that you can what? Give yourself permission to have a feeling. We can waste an entire lifetime in the pursuit of something that is available actually when? Now. Hate to burst some bubbles here, but the real thing that you're actually after is a feeling. But some of you have created a path. First of all, it's impossible. You actually won't get what you want. And the sad thing is you might be like Tolstoy. You guys know that story of Ivan Illich? Ivan Illich was a was a Russian man, it was a composer. He, uh, he could compose the most beautiful music. And then he met the love of his wife, but she had different plans for him. She didn't want him to be a composer. She wanted him to be someone that was important. She wanted him to be a, a judge in the land, a chief magistrate. So he set his music aside, he went to school, and he went on and he became one of the most renowned judges and magistrates in the land. Did this his entire life. Never got back to his music. An unhappy man in the pursuit of making someone else happy. On his deathbed, he was miserable. He turned to his wife and the last words he spoke what if it was all for nothing? And then he died. The thing that you actually want is attainable when. Are you freaking telling me that you can skip all the millions and billions and have what you really want when? What if I actually told you that the secret to producing powerful results came down to your ability to command your emotional state when? No. Let me give you guys a modern example of this. Do we have our mic runner? David, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Can I do that for a minute? David, go ahead and stand up, guys. Give David a huge round of applause. Woo! You might notice this man has a really big ring on his finger. He's got two of these Super Bowl rings, right? Yeah. And I wanna ask you, how hard did you train to win that Super Bowl with your team? Unbelievably hard. What kind of mindset did you guys all collectively share and cultivate? I didn't, By the give, way, a, never... I didn't give a number. You didn't give a number? No. Because? I tried and tried and tried until I got it right. I worked and worked and worked effortlessly, limitlessly to get things right. Things out on the football field aren't going to be perfect. Things in life aren't going to be perfect. But whenever you lose, don't lose the lesson. Don't lose what you learn from losing. There's something that's going to make you stronger from it. Thank you. And let me also ask you, guys, give it up for that. That's awesome. Just incredible. David and I have actually never had this conversation before, but I already know some things about David because I know that you do not win the Super Bowl two times unless you learn to master and cultivate a way of being and a way of feeling. Can you afford as a team to spend a lot of time languishing in sadness and depression? Absolutely not. So when you lose a game or you lose a play, what do you do? You regroup, learn from it, and move forward. Awesome. So how important is it to actually maintain the, the ideal state in pursuit of a championship? It's crucial. 
Because if you let that one play, say there's 70 plays in a game, if you let the third play of that game ruin you, it's going to affect the next 67. So if you let that failure affect you that one time, it's going to snowball and it's like quicksand. It's pulling you right in. And what happens? You self-destruct yourself. A couple years ago, I was, uh, I went to, when the Seahawks went to the Super Bowl for the first time, that was my home team growing up. And my dad loved Seahawks. So I got my dad and I front row seats. It was an amazing experience. I spent more time enjoying with the look on his face than even watching the game. But as they were playing the Broncos on the second play, you guys know what happened? Does anyone remember what happened in that game? What happened? Safety. A safety. And the Broncos never recovered. They could not recover. And it was odd. I don't know how on earth I bought like these awesome front row Seahawks tickets next to all of the Broncos. And my dad and I did not cheer for the rest of the game because the Broncos all had to look like, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you right now. I'm like, it's not me, it's your team. Well, I'm going to kill you. So it was hostile and it was intense. But you see, you've got to learn how to keep your cool because by the way, when you're in the pursuit of a championship, doing something you've never done before, are you going to face obstacles you've never faced before? Undefeated teams. You are going to face undefeated teams. You're going to face people that maybe have stronger offense or defense might be better than you. But in the end, I bet how you prepare determines outcome. And so here's my curiosity. How important is psychology in the state of actually winning a championship when there's a ton of skill? If it's everything. If you can't find it in yourself, where will you go for it? Guys, give it up for David. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. So when you get a chance to meet someone that has attained the highest level of attainment in a sport where you've got fierce competition that starts in high school, starts in freaking junior high now, there's something to learn. And this is what I learn about people. I've had a chance to interview Olympians. I've had a chance to, I was with Sean White and chit-chatting with him. Some of you know he's one of the most decorated here for the American team when it comes to snowboarding. And same conversation, mastering your state. But guess what? It's not for the Olympians. It's for who? Me. This is for who? Me. You guys want to know how to multiply your results? How many of you, for example, this year would like to double your income? Would that be cool? Yeah. Do you know what's going to determine whether you double your income or not? State. It's going to be a decision with maintaining a proper state the entire time. Show up! <laughs> awesome. Sit down. When I say it this time, here's what I want to invite you to do. I want to teach you how to show up from fake it. I want to teach you how to show it in the most authentic space. So we're going to do a little practice right now. Now, by the way, how many of you are getting that if tomorrow's all on real estate, that we need the psychology and we got to master that psychology? You want to know what the number one thing is that takes down real estate investors? What's the number one thing that takes down real estate investors? Think about it. You don't have the safety of working for someone else. You're in business for yourself. Being a real estate investor means that you're in business for yourself. You guys know the statistics on businesses that fail in the first year? Why do 80% of businesses fail the first year? Could be a number of things. Could be a bad idea. Could be the wrong team. Could be a bad choice. But you know what it usually comes down to? They have a number of times they're willing to fail and you now know your number. That number needs to be replaced with what? Limitless. No number. You get to eradicate bad. You get to eradicate. When people pay money to mentor with me one-on-one, -on -one, something I used to do, I've replaced that now with my favorite mastermind on the planet. But when people were paying to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, they'd write a massive check. And then when I'd work with them within six, 12 months, they'd have the most amazing results. See people that this one man worked for 27 years, never broke 100 grand in his life and in 10 months made a million dollars. What he did did not matter, it didn't change. What changed was how he felt, what changed was his psychology. So just imagine for a moment, even though we got a lot of people in the room, imagine that you and I are sharing a very intimate one-on-one -on -one moment. We're sitting in my office, and you have some great goal. And I'm sitting there like, okay, Chris, I wanna have the success, I want a big successful business, I wanna freaking crush it. What's my first step? You know what the first thing I'm gonna do with you? I'm gonna crack your head wide open. I'm gonna look at your psychology. I'm gonna look at the way that you manage your emotions. And if it sucks, then we're not gonna work on the business. We're gonna work on you as a human being. 